Anti-aging TikTok. It's so evil. Anti-aging TikTok has taken over the platform. And the thing that's fucked up is that it's targeted at young women, as young as 14. I think that's the age minimum for TikTok. So you have 14-year-old girls who are being inundated with skincare routines, anti-aging tips. And not only that, you have 14-year-olds who are making anti-aging TikTok videos. This creator on TikTok has anti-aging videos, one of which is called Things I Do to Slow Down the Aging Process as a 14-year-old. Started doing most of these things at 12. Number one, I take two apple cider vinegar pills. I do this twice a day. Number two, I use a retinol twice a day. And one of my favorite tips is I get my body lotion and put a little bit in that and then apply to my body as usual. It's actually so good for you. Next is I love Korean skincare and I do two face masks a day. I always use the leftover essence all over my body. I leave this face mask on for around 10 minutes. Never forget to do skincare on your neck because that's one of the main things that ages. Again, using the leftovers. Next, I would always recommend a sunscreen with usually an SPF above 50. I use three fingers worth before my makeup. It doesn't matter if I'm just going to school, I always do this. Next, I always have green tea in the morning. Green tea is great for slowing down the anti-aging process and it's super anti-inflammatory. And the next thing I do, and probably the most crazy, is whenever I'm going on a long road trip, I always tape up a piece of construction paper. This blocks most of the UV rays. And oh last my god. Least, I always sleep with a satin pillowcase. Bye hotties. Let me just remind you, she's 14 years old. And so it's not her fault because she has been brainwashed by TikTok, Instagram, the beauty industry, you name it, into thinking she needs to do those things. Problem is other 14 year olds are following her content and now have adopted their own insane anti-aging skincare regimens into their day-to-day -day. skin that is as young as 14 years old. Like retinol once upon a time was something that middle-aged women and up we're using. And now you have 14 year olds who are doing this twice a day, which anybody who's ever used retinol knows that you should never use it twice a day. I have retinol. I use it maybe once a week and just a little tiny bit. There's so much about this from the mental aspects as well as the physical damage that they are incurring by having these 12 step skincare routines before they're even through puberty. She says she started her practice when she was only 12. My God. 12 year olds are terrified of aging because we have made it out to be this horrible thing. When in reality, aging is, it's beautiful. It's, it's something that really is a privilege to be able to age. I know this is nothing new, but it has gotten so much worse because of platforms like TikTok and because of this being advertised and working on such young girls. Sadly, she's actually pre-aging her skin doing this. Her skin will get used to all those products and stop self-producing its own oils, etc. Also, those products won't work anymore, but her skin will still need them to maintain, like heroin. They're consuming it like candy and they're getting heavily influenced. Sure, you could say that Carson's wellness routine is more of a hobby. I would disagree with this notion, but I can guarantee that it's not something she'd be doing now if it weren't for social media. And I absolutely agree with that. Listen, do I wake up some days and hate the fact that I have way more gray hairs than I did five years ago. Yeah. Do I see a new soft little wrinkle by my eye that wasn't there before? And I'm like, holy shit. Of course, like I'm not gonna pretend that I haven't noticed changes in myself from five, 10 years ago that have left me feeling not so great, but we need to stop, especially when it comes to women, looking at aging as this bad thing and putting this pressure on women to look youthful and perfect their entire lives. All right, let's watch this video. This is Funky Farag Bates video on anti-aging TikTok. Aging, you know, that thing we all try not to think about. Over 300,000 TikTok users liked a video where a doctor is shaming people for laughing too much? Rankles. Ew. Have you tried not expressing basic human joy? This woman really said, POV, you've had a happy and fulfilling life. Why would you do that? You're ugly now. What is wrong with you? We can't minimize when somebody like Kim Kardashian says that she doesn't like to smile, especially in photos, because smiling gives you wrinkles.
to some of you, you might be like, okay, well, that's fucking stupid. I don't listen to Kim Kardashian. Anyway, do you know how many people do listen to her? Do you know how many people look at how Kim Kardashian looks and think, oh, she looks that way because she's not smiling and therefore she's not getting wrinkles. And it's like, okay, that's that plus all of the fucking work she's had done. But people, they listen to those things. They are influenced by somebody who looks like Kim Kardashian. Notice how all the pictures this pharmaceutical fart used were of women. That's a total coincidence and not at all indicative of a larger pattern that we will be seeing repeated throughout this video. Wrong way to drink out of a straw because it can cause wrinkles. Oh my God. Okay, so I got this straw on Amazon and it literally is the best. It doesn't cause wrinkles. You can easily drink out from the top the of it. Straws. This might be the best invention for anti-aging. This is a straw that is supposed to prevent you from pursing your lips when you take a sip. Quick question. Uh, if I'm not supposed to drink when I'm thirsty, when am I supposed to drink? This is aging your neck. Looking at your phone like this creates a crease here. So make sure you hold your phone at eye level to avoid unnecessary creasing of the neck. Excellent advice. I'll be sure to do this next time I'm in public. Hello, I'm just a normal citizen using... Uh, these videos actually make me want to shove my head okay. in a wall. Okay. Bad habits that make you age faster, part 46. Eating too much spicy food. Taking long, super hot showers. Eating processed meats like bacon, sausage, or hot dogs. Instructions unclear. Uh, this one makes me... So this is some device that you can buy that will simulate a facelift without having to go under the knife. If you'll notice, the people who are making these anti-aging TikToks are all young. They have not aged. So listen up, all you 20-year-olds. Make sure you're giving yourself a facelift at home so God forbid you don't look 20. A big trend in the anti-aging community right now is these very expensive LED masks that supposedly prevent wrinkles and acne. If you have skin that's just starting to age but you also break out, I would say the Dr. Dennis Gross is the one for you. It has obviously red light, which is what most LED masks have, but it also has blue light, which is great for anti-acne, and you can turn on both at the same time, which is what I do. LED therapy is approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, but there seems to be a consensus amongst dermatologists who aren't being paid to say otherwise, that the benefits of these at-home LED treatments are minimal to non-existent. It doesn't matter. There will always be some new product that comes out. And so even people who have spent thousands of dollars on this bullshit, because this industry is so powerful and they're so good at marketing, they just keep selling new bullshit and then people will buy it. And yes, it is like a placebo effect. It gets a little extra unethical when the people vouching for these products have had extensive work yep. done, trying to convince their audience that some moisturizer will make them look like a celebrity. But while creams and masks may break the bank, there are other anti-aging solutions that are far more extreme. After they peeled everything off, that she's had a lot of tightening, incredible transformation here, but this is risky, it should never be done at home. I, I couldn't even show the first part of that video because she literally had her skin chemically burned off. Now, to be fair, I've had this done and it's not something that I would just tell people to go ahead and get done. I've talked at length about what happened to my skin after I went off my birth control. I've showed you pictures, so I had to, undergo a lot of really intensive dermatological procedures. I don't do chemical peels anymore. When I finally got with a new dermatologist, they were like, no, 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 we don't do those. I do lasers and I'll do microneedling, but I do not do chemical peels anymore. If you like to torture yourself, keep watching this video. Today, I saw my girlfriend- Oh, and by the way, they sell at-home chemical peels now. Don't do them, please don't. Cosmetic injector, face by SM, and we do Morpheus A. It's a microneedling device that uses radio frequency, and apparently Kim Kardashian loves it. We even use numbing cream and I still cried. This thing hurts like a mother. By the way, the Morpheus 8 costs thousands of dollars. 
thousands of dollars. Deep Pass feels like getting electrocuted. Just in case those testimonies weren't enough to convince you how painful this procedure is, here's a brief demonstration on how deeply this medieval torture device penetrates the skin. Apparently the Morpheus 8 is used to remodel and contour the face, but of all the videos we've seen and all the plastic surgery we haven't even covered, nothing disturbed me quite as much as this. Today is the day I'm going to tell you how I learned to stop using the muscles in my face. This oh is one of my, my most asked God. questions. When I would get home from school, I would sit in front of my mirror and I would practice having a full-blown conversation with myself, being happy, sad, angry, mad, everything, without using the muscles in my face, hoping that what in the, the future, 30-year-old me, 40-year-old me would not have wrinkles and would be able to talk and be happy, sit in front of the mirror, just try and practice. It took hours. I'll admit it took hours, but it is worth it, I'm telling you. And Okay, I'm telling you right now, too, she has Botox in her face. This is a young woman in her 20s who already has Botox in her skin and is now teaching people how to not use the muscles in their face. Now to see someone be so terrified of the natural progression of aging that they don't even allow themselves to make yeah, basic she probably has filler human as well. expressions yes. is it's horrifying. I fear that when people like this inevitably see that very first wrinkle pop up on their youthful skin, they're not going to be able to handle it. First thing we're going to address are smile lines. And what you're going to want to do for that is smile and chew up. Let me explain. Level one, you're just going to be smiling. Level two, you're going to actually use gum and you're going to chew upwards. So you want to be activating this muscle right here like this. I know it looks a little weird, but trust me, it's gonna strengthen this whole muscle and it's gonna give you a really heart-shaped face, which is extremely what? useful. This fear of aging is incredibly pervasive on social media, leading to these 24-year-old women in the prime of their life, by the way, joking about being undesirable <laughs> because of forehead wrinkles. This is batshit crazy. If she were the only person who was doing this, I'd be like, okay, this is just one psycho on TikTok. But she's not. And you look at all the comments and how popular she is, and that means that there are more and more people like this who have bought into this insanity. While there are many men who have also been swept up in the anti-aging craze, like that ghoul-eyed tech oh billionaire God, that this spends guy? $2 million a year to stay young and swap blood with his son. He is 45 and he looks 45. So all of this like blood swapping and weird shit that he does, it ain't working because <laughs> he looks how old he is. The vast majority of anti-aging content and products are directed towards women. And I have to ask, why is that? This topic is pretty complex to deal with in a video that's any shorter than four hours, but let's hit some highlights. First off, I want to clarify that yes, men have their own set of ridiculous beauty standards that they're expected to adhere to. The difference is, unlike women, historically men have had far more opportunities to accrue social status through other means besides physical appearance. Not to mention, many of the more extreme standards for male beauty tend to be more related to the concept of the male power fantasy rather than the actual preferences of the opposite gender. To put it bluntly, your lady friend is a lot more likely to turn into a water slide watching Mr. Darcy stand oh. in the rain than seeing some dude with abs. In a study conducted with OkCupid okay users, women tended to prefer men around their own age, while men, regardless Bruh. of their age, found women in their early 20s 20s. the most attractive. 22 to be exact. This is a stat that I love to pull out. Men of any age, doesn't matter if they're 20 or 90, think that 22-year-old women, on average, is the ideal age. It's when they are most beautiful, when they're the best, etc. 50-year-old men were more attracted to women young enough to be their daughters than a partner of their own age. Awesome. It's very apparent in our society that on average, men tend to go for women much younger than them. Further evidence supporting the idea that youthfulness is the dominant factor when it comes to how society judges a woman's attractiveness and unfortunately, therefore, her value is the way women are edited in magazines. This is illustrated beautifully by TikTok user yep. at Caroline in the City, who made a series of videos where she photoshopped male celebrities 
the same way female celebrities are. So there's something that I've noticed going back and rewatching episodes of shows like Bones, content that was made in the early to mid 2000s. I didn't realize how much they blur the skin of the lead actresses. Now they still do that. They still blur actresses' faces and sometimes actors' faces. It's just that they're better at doing it now. Why can't we do the same for the women instead of airbrushing them? The only time you'll see a male celebrity de-aged that aggressively is if he's literally being deep faked to play a younger version of himself for a movie flashback. It's also like how when men get into their 50s and 60s, they get called salt and pepper daddies. Like their wrinkles are just part of their sexiness. They're not expected to look anything other than their age. Whereas for women, what you'll see so often is like aging so gracefully or, you know, looking very youthful. They are just expected to look younger than they actually are. Like you'll see like, oh, she doesn't even look 50 years old. Actresses like Helen Mirren, I would say the exception rather than the rule when it comes to Older women in Hollywood being still seen as viable. And same with a Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep gets to age. You know, she, she doesn't have to worry about having wrinkles on her face because she's Meryl Streep. But for most actresses, again, like the whole, the old adage is once you hit 40, then you're pretty much dead. I am in no way shaming or mocking the women themselves. All of them are victims to powerful and ancient social pressures that are bigger than any of us. I'm incredibly proud of my generation, though. I have seen so many young people posting anti-anti-aging TikToks. Yeah, now there's been a push against anti-aging and people are like, I'm pro-aging, okay? And they'll post a video of themselves scrunching up their faces, sleeping on their sides, like doing all the things that you're being told you're not supposed to do. And listen, there's nothing wrong with buying nice night cream or, you know, doing a little micro needling, like if that's what you want to do. I do these things. I have my products. I'm not saying that we shouldn't want to look good. And as we get older, there are more things that you need to do to look good and to feel good, especially with women, you go through menopause, like it's harder to lose weight, it's harder to keep weight off, your body hurts more, it's harder to work out. It's just the societal pressures that are put on us, especially women, to maintain a youthfulness because then otherwise we have no value. Our beauty, our youth is tied into our inherent worth and that is what is bad. I've listened to so many women Older women talk about the fact that when they got to a certain age, that they became invisible, especially women who are naturally very pretty and so had a lot of attention when they were younger, when they were in their 20s and 30s. And for the first time in their lives, like because they're older now, realizing that, oh, you know, maybe to some people, oh, I'll be referred to as a cougar, but otherwise I am not what's hot anymore in society simply because I'm no longer 24. But there are also a lot of women who have talked about the fact that they do love aging because they no longer have to deal with all the looks and harassment that they got when they were younger because older women are much more invisible in society than younger women are. And it doesn't mean that older women don't get sexually harassed still, but women who talk about the fact that like, oh, I now as a 60 year old am not going to be catcalled the way I was when I was 25. And so for the first time, like I can relax walking down the street. That's why the anti-aging trend on TikTok feeds into this notion that women are only as valuable as they are youthful looking. TikTok is changing what it means to be old. It's also things like teenage look filters. They have filters now that make you look like a teenager. This is exactly what I looked like in high school. Whoever made this filter, I'll be sending you my therapy bill. This is so dark, man. Why are young TikTokers so afraid of growing older? And let's, let's not forget capitalism, okay? All of this is rooted in capitalism. It benefits the beauty industry for women, as soon as they come out of the womb, to feel they need to do whatever it takes to not have a single wrinkle. That is capitalism. It all traces back to that. There are literally studies that show the more you know about aging, the less fear it holds. Laurier says that people our age should also think about how they talk on the TikTok app. Yes. 
I think people who are in their 30s and up need to stop joking about being old. People make a lot of jokes about, oh, I can't move my body anymore. Oh, my knees are turning to dust. I know people mean well and it's self-deprecation, but I do think these jokes can have an effect on how people actually view you. I will give you a personal story. In my sister group chat, my older sister who's 32, myself 30, and then my sister, my middle sister who's 28, we're constantly doing this kind of talk. And we're talking about like, oh, I just did this. Oh, I want to do this. Oh, I want to do that. And it wasn't until my 20 two-year-old sister who just graduated college said to us, I don't like hearing you guys constantly say these things. It makes me feel sad that you view yourself this way. And I had to be like, oh my God, oh my God, I can't believe, oh geez. She goes, but it also makes me feel badly. I'm 22 years old and I don't want to feel this pressure to have to do all these things. You guys don't need any of this stuff. And I was like, yeah, I know we don't need it. She's like, yeah, but it doesn't sound as if you know that. It, it just seems as if you guys are more so hating on your bodies and on your faces than you are loving on them. And I was like, damn, this is fucked up. My baby sister, my 22 year old sister is having to, to, to be the one to say enough is enough. Spitting facts. She's really laying them down. And I'm like, I should be the role model for her. She is of the generation that's growing up with this. And so the fact that she was able to stop us rather than it being the other way around is is very admirable. So I've been better. I've been I've been working on not feeding into this ageist bullshit. We should all delete TikTok, I guess, in conclusion. Delete the internet, actually. How about that? But if you're not gonna delete TikTok, try your best to avoid buying into this shit. Avoid it, because here's the thing. You watch one video, your whole For You page is going to push you this shit.